When we think of ancient Egypt, our minds automatically jump to a bunch of people wearing too much eyeliner building the Great Pyramids. But there are a lot of strange secrets about ancient Egypt that most people just don't know about. We'll reveal some of the most bizarre things about this fascinating ancient culture. No, it's not a hieroglyph, that's the subscribe button. Pushing it, then turning on notifications, means that you won't miss out on the latest from the hub. Burial You've no doubt heard about the mummification process used by ancient Egyptians, but did you know that only the very wealthy could afford to have it done? The embalming process was extremely detailed and time-consuming, and could take up to 70 days to complete. Even just drying out the body took well over a month. But for those who couldn't afford to be mummified, they got a bit of a helping hand from the local climate. Less than wealthy Egyptians were buried in underground holes out in the desert, where the arid climate worked to mummify them naturally. Ironically, sometimes these bodies ended up more well-preserved than the bodies that had been painstakingly mummified by humans. Men were generally embalmed, whether by humans or the climate, right away. But women, who were especially beautiful or powerful, were left out for a few days until they became less so. This was to prevent the living from tampering with the bodies. And sadly, this wasn't just baseless paranoia, but was confirmed in a couple of cases before they came up with this strategy to prevent it. For those bodies who ended up in a hole in the desert, they were placed in the fetal position, with a few objects that could potentially be of use in the afterlife. Or maybe they just wanted to make them appear even more creepy when they were discovered years later. Obesity you might think of obesity as a recent problem, and one that could not surely have affected the ancient Egyptians. After all, haven't we all seen ancient Egyptian art which depicted everyone as rather slender? Well, much like your Facebook page, it probably only reveals one flattering aspect of you. It turns out that the most wealthy and powerful Egyptians were actually overweight or obese, and this includes the much revered pharaohs. Many mummies have been found that were in poor health and overweight, and even suffering from diabetes. Queen Hatshepsut was a female pharaoh from the 15th century BC. While drawings depicted her as beautiful and slender, in reality, she was grossly overweight, bald, and suffered from diabetes. We wonder if she gave people the old dating site line, oh, those drawings were from a few years ago. If you're wondering why so many ancient Egyptians suffered with their weight, it was because their diets were very high in sugar. They took in massive quantities of beer, honey, bread, and wine, and it took its toll on them based on the evidence we have uncovered. The wealthier the citizen, the more sweets they were able to consume, and the more their weight Lines grew as a result. Birth control. We tend to think that birth control is a relatively modern invention, but the truth is that it's been around for a very long time in some form or another. The ancient Egyptians did have some rather interesting methods of staving off unwanted pregnancy. In fact, they even invented the world's first pregnancy test. Women would urinate on a sample of barley and wheat and see if it grew. If it didn't grow, that meant the woman was with child. Amazingly enough, that method actually works, although it is a bit more primitive than our current methods. They discovered that certain substances had spermicidal properties and used these to prevent pregnancy. Pregnancy. These include acai gum, which is still used in spermicidal jellies today, honey, and sodium carbonate. While that is actually pretty impressive, they did use some strange things, such as crocodile dung, that we certainly are glad we don't utilize anymore. Men didn't really have it much easier when it came to ineffective birth control methods, and were instructed to apply onion juice to themselves before intercourse. Although to be fair, between the crocodile dung and the onion juice, pregnancy may have been prevented by preventing intercourse altogether. Laxatives Medicine was a huge part of life in ancient Egypt, and besides developing primitive forms of birth control, they were really focused on one other specific area of medicine, laxatives. We told you that a great many Egyptians were overweight, but they didn't want to be, as slender bodies were much more revered. Instead of cutting down on the bread and honey, they tried to flush it out using laxatives instead. They used many methods that we still utilize today, such as consuming bran, dates, and castor oil. Some other strange concoctions involved cumin, goose fat, and milk all boiled together. In addition to weight loss, they believed laxatives could cure pretty much anything, including diarrhea. Their logic was that if you force everything out as fast as possible, you would feel better faster. Well, that's not the worst logic, just keep in mind that they didn't exactly have plumbing back then. They were so concerned with this area of the body that they even had their own version of proctologists who could administer enemas if needed. They even had a myth about the enemas and believed that they were created by the god Thoth just for them. Uncurable while the ancient Egyptians did actually know an astonishing amount about medicine and the human body, they did have some seriously strange ideas as well. For example, they were under the impression that men menstruated the way women do. Had they come up with this strange conclusion? Well, it's not as crazy as it might seem at first. You see, the ancient Egyptians were frequently afflicted with a disease known as schistosomiasis, 
It's caused by parasitic flatworms that enter the body and affect the urinary tract and intestines. One of the symptoms of this disease is bloody urine, so when it happened to the men, they just assumed that they were menstruating the way women do. It was actually viewed as a rite of passage and signaled that they were becoming adults. It's strange to think that peeing blood was once considered a good thing, but it was in ancient Egypt. It was thought that this indicated the men were fertile and ready to be fathers. Another frequently accepted part of everyday life was lice. Egypt was pretty infested, and although they tried many solutions to get rid of these creepy crawlies, most Egyptians just ended up shaving their heads and bodies entirely. They would wear wigs that could be easily discarded if they became too full of lice. Hieroglyphs The ancient hieroglyphs are one of the first things we think about when we picture Egypt. This script consists of hundreds of intricate images meant to convey a complex language. But in the day-to-day, -day, jotting things down in hieroglyphs was just too time-consuming for every day. Hieroglyphs were reserved only for the most important of texts, including decorating temples and tombs or recording the achievements of the wealthy and powerful. For writing down grocery lists and other mundane tasks, Egypts used hieratic, which was a shorthand version of hieroglyphic writing. Eventually, even this devolved into an even simpler form of writing known as dimitic. Even these simpler languages were unreadable for most of the people living back then. It's estimated that at most, only 10% of people were literate in any way. So if you've ever studied some ancient hieroglyphs and wondered what they could possibly mean, most of the ancient Egyptians probably wouldn't have known the answer either. Scribes learned how to read and write, and went to a special school to learn how. It was a long and tedious process, and one that few had the patience for. Becoming a scribe was generally hereditary, and would take about four or five years of study before graduation keeping it in the family. In ancient Egypt, heredity was kind of a big deal, especially for the wealthy and powerful. It wasn't uncommon for many of Egypt's kings to marry their sisters or half-sisters. While this may make you cringe, practically, it made sense at the time. This meant that the queen had been trained in her duties since birth and that she would never waver in her loyalty to her husband and children. This custom was even represented in their mythology, such as the union between Isis and Osiris. Of course, as we now know, such unions have serious risks, including leaving your kingdom vulnerable to white walkers and, of course, serious health problems. The famous King Tutankhamun was thought to have been frail and sickly, and his tomb was filled with walking sticks and medicine. DNA evidence from his mummified remains, and the remains of those sharing his tomb, revealed that his parents were siblings, and there were rumors that King Tut's own wife was either his sister or his half-sister. Although inbreeding wasn't required in ancient Egypt, it was expected in many cases and was seen in practically every dynasty. Pyramids how could we have a video about ancient Egypt and not mention the pyramids? Perhaps the most infamous tombs in the world, these structures were only created for the most wealthy and powerful in all of ancient Egypt. Many people believe that slaves were forced to complete these massive structures, but we have proof that this was not the case. In fact, some of the employees who built the pyramids were lucky enough to be entombed nearby, with jars that once contained beer and bread for them to snack on in the afterlife. It might sound strange today, but being buried near the pyramids was considered a big honor, and it speaks to how valued these workers were. It's thought that the Great Pyramid was built by a voluntary workforce of 50,000 salaried employees and an additional 20,000 temporary workers filling in part-time. These workers were free to leave at any time, and most traveled from their home to work on the pyramid in three to four month stints. They were provided with food, drink, and medical attention as needed. Despite not being slaves, these workers lived hard lives, and many were found to have signs of arthritis and other physical ailments caused by strenuous labor. The Mystery of King Tut we know a bit more about King Tut's family tree and its overlapping branches than perhaps most of us would like to, but how exactly he expired has always been a mystery. While many other ancient tombs had been ransacked by grave robbers, King Tut's final resting place was undisturbed, giving us a plethora of evidence and making him one of the most well-known kings of ancient Egypt. For a long time, there were a number of theories about how the young king passed away. He was notoriously frail and sickly, so it was reasonable to assume he died of an illness. But Dr. Benson Harer has a new theory that he is convinced tells the true story of King Tut. Death? by hippopotamus. It sounds crazy, but it is plausible. Hippos can be dangerous and aggressive, and the ancient Egyptians feared them with good reason. Tut's body was found with severed ribs and was missing its heart or interior chest wall, which was a departure from the very strict embalming regimen at the time. This led Dr. Harrow to believe that Tut was crushed and that the pharaoh's known fondness for hippo hunting may have been the cause. His tomb even features a picture of him throwing a harpoon, leading some Egyptologists to conclude that he suffered from an unfortunate hunting accident. Cleopatra Perhaps even more well-known than King Tut was the infamous Queen Cleopatra. It may surprise you to know that Egypt's most famous queen wasn't actually Egyptian. 
While she was born in Egypt, her family was from Greece. Regardless of her background, Cleopatra embraced Egyptian culture and was the first in her family to speak the Egyptian language. Her family line was particularly incestuous, and Cleopatra herself actually married both of her brothers, although they had no children together. A lot of propaganda at the time painted her as being absolutely gorgeous, but now we know that she was renowned for her wit and charm rather than her physical assets. She was extremely well educated, and many have described her personality as irresistible. Many depictions of Cleopatra show her with a large hooked nose and seem to hint that she wasn't as traditionally beautiful as many believed her to be. As if her intellect and charm weren't enough, she also used magic tricks to make herself seem more impressive. When Julius Caesar arrived for a visit, Cleopatra smuggled herself into his personal quarters in either a sack or a carpet. We assume she popped out and yelled, ta-da, but regardless, Caesar was actually impressed by her grand entrance. There are so many fascinating facts about this ancient civilization that it was hard to narrow it down to just 10. Did we miss your favorite little known fact about ancient Egypt? If so, tell us in the comments section and we might include it in a future video. Before you go, be sure to like our video and subscribe to The Hub for more. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.